Hello, my name is Gary Mansfield, and this is a bonus episode of the Ministry of Arts podcast. Now, as ever, let's begin by banging these bongos. Hello, and welcome to this bonus episode of the Ministry of Arts podcast. For the third consecutive year, we've partnered with the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Trail, where we get the opportunity to speak to several of their featured artists. And today's episode is one of those. But before I take you to meet them, let me just give you a little bit of information about the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Trail. The Art Week is, well, it's just a little bit longer than a week. It runs from the 22nd of June until the 2nd of July. And the Art Trail runs from the 16th of June right up until the end of August. And the Art Trail even has its own art bus. It stops in the location of various artworks and you can jump on and jump off at your heart's content. For the full list of featured artists and a whole lot more information, go over to the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week Instagram page, which is KCAW London, and you'll find everything there that you need. Today, I had the absolute pleasure of speaking with Malgozata Lijetska, who was born and raised in Poland where she also completed her BA and first MA before moving to London and doing one over here as well. And when I caught up with her today, she happened to be in Prague, where she's doing a six-day work placement. Malgazata is an installation artist, a sculptor. She creates wearable art and she's a performance artist, most of which was covered in this conversation. When I spoke to Malgazata, she was in a large studio space, so there is an echo, but it doesn't detract from that conversation. A conversation that you're now going to be a part of. So please come with me as I spoke to Malgazata Lyshetska. Malgazata, well, I have seven questions I ask every guest. The first is, how would you explain what you do to someone that may not know your work? Okay, so let's let's give it a try. Um, okay, so my practice is mainly based around the sculpture and art installations that um, that often engage the public as well, or let the public to to be very close to 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 the objects, to the sculpture, to become a part of the of the installation. So. Uh, yeah, and very often I'm using uh, textiles and materials and the mannequins and performers time to time to create the situations where that like where someone can get into, but they look a little bit artificial, but like at the same time quite real. So yeah, there's like yeah. this. I I love this thin edge of being on you know on the edge of uncanny valley uh, and. Yeah, so so I, I, I make the, the the installations that are that, that were like before I like I, I was like mainly inspired by people in the context of of the social functioning and and some forces that somehow influence that. And recently I started moving into exploring more natural world and some phenomena that exist there. At the very moment, I'm trying to combine these two worlds, like this micro, micro uh, world of na- natural yeah. uh, organisms and yeah, everything that's everything that it's invisible to to, to to us in the easy way to more like a social uh, patterns of behaviors and and the way we function. Yeah, pretty much. And you said that you often like public interaction. Your artworks, are they artworks in the public realm or are they just installations inside a gallery? I always kind of think that like my practice has two sides. It has like kind of like two legs. Uh, so one is is the objects that I they make mainly to to public space, to 
you know, to 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 the access for general yeah. audience. And I really, really enjoy the fact that it kind of allows allows me to to use the larger scale to play with, you know, in, if if it's site specific, it allows me to, to play with with the environments, with architecture, with like some natural, yeah, natural habitat <laughs> somewhere. And yeah, it can be it can be really it, it can be something that surprises people who who visit the, the site. And the other things are like a little bit smaller, smaller scale, like not that small, but like you know, comparing to <laughs> the <laughs> public art installation, there are yeah, smaller, yeah. smaller uh, installations that I that are more likely to be to be shown in in galleries, like like the one where I'm using mannequ- where I'm using mannequins. So. So yeah, so this this is something that like is always a tension where where my practice is based, and I always try to keep both in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep the balance going. Yeah. Um, your art journey. How did it start? Was there creativity in the home growing up? Uh, I think my like my mom, my aunt, uh, my even my grandma. They they've been always doing something like making stuff uh, like crap but more like you know related to craft things like sewing you know it was like it was it was always present but uh none of my you know family close relatives were an artist artist so i when i discovered that like oh this is something i like mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> i and i wanted to follow it i i think like I, I always heard that this is something that you can do as a hobby rather than your main practice because like like yeah like you rather have to be like the, the, the only famous artists are dead already or uh, you know you can't you can't like make a living of this so so I always like been a little bit discouraged of uh, like thinking about it as a my main 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 path in life uh but somehow i very consequently you know went to the fine fine art high school and then i i yeah i got to to the academy of fine arts in warsaw and it keeps going so it's been like that for for, for most of my life now but <laughs> it's like yeah whereabouts did you grow up uh i grew up in in poland in uh this city called Częstochowa, which is like a little bit above the Silesia, Silesia, uh, but it's not a part of this. But yeah, and then I I, I lived in Warsaw for for about the ten years, so I always have a problem like to 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 answer where are you from because <laughs> I'm like I really feel Everywhere. like in, in between, <laughs> yeah, because like you know you grow up somewhere else and then like you all you kind of like a adult life was somewhere else and now I live, live I live in London so, so so yeah it's like pretty much like being being from from somewhere and everywhere so, so wh- whereabouts did you do your art training if you like like your degree I did my first degree like my my BA and um, my MA in Warsaw in Fine Arts Academy it was like a sculpture department so very much traditional approach to the sculpture that I really tried to you know, get away from. So I started making the things that were like a bit problematic. Uh, and then after a few years, like when when I moved to to to, to London, I also took another MA course in Royal College of Arts. Uh, yeah, so I kind of like you know like studied in both places. So this and is an interesting experience. Comparison. Just out of interest, how do they compare in certain elements? Obviously one differs from the other in certain parts i have a i I think a lot about like this uh, these things like what's the differences and like where the good things happen and where where yeah something can can could, could work better so i think like in i really appreciate for example that like in in it's kind of like a system in in warsaw uh, was more informal, I'd say. It was much easier to to get an access to some certain studios, oh, to, good, yeah. to some people you would like to approach and like, I don't know, like have them as your mentor. So uh, it was much easier. It was less formalized. You, yeah, you have to 
do something, but it wasn't like the layers of, you know, sign ups, trainings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always gets but, in the way. Yeah. So, so, and also like, I think the, the contact with, 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 with the tutors uh, is a little bit more direct. I think, you know, it's like, I think like Slavs doesn't really like rub <laughs> in cotton <laughs> that much. So, so the things that can be very harsh and like, I think that some, for some people it can be, you know, like, uh, yeah, the very, very like bad experiences to hear that like you bring in some work and someone says like, oh, it's like, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> I think that's like, a good, I think bad. that's a good foundation myself yeah, to, be, like, to have someone being honest with you. As long as it's, as long as it's constructive, that's fine. But not yeah, but as sometimes you say. it wasn't constructive. Yeah, sometimes oh, it wasn't okay. constructive. <laughs> sometimes it was just like someone's mood or someone's, <laughs> you know, someone's aesthetic that like you didn't like really follow. So, so in a way, like you learn to bounce from something, and maybe like it kind of like gives you a harder skin in a way. So yeah, if you yeah. still keep continuing, like you don't really, you know. You don't really, uh, yeah. Maybe I feel like less vulnerable now because I already like been exposed to a lot of like violent, you know, <laughs> teaching methods or something like that. Yeah. So while in here, I felt like let's say the contact with tutors was like very formal, very strict, very like limited to forty-five minutes, like two times in a term, and and everyone's like nodding your head and like giving you references but never like saying that like don't go there it's just you know yeah yeah like it's not interesting like because like maybe there's something you will discover and like i feel like from both ways it's it's good from both ways because like you can't discourage someone because you may kill someone's potential very easily if you are very like harsh like oh, to their, like, without the yeah, you just don't know not, someone's temperament, do you? Exactly. Yeah. So, so this is this is the main thing that I like. You know, I I, I saw it's like a, yeah the difference in like at least one wasn't more sort of um, too much of yeah, a challenge. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting now in the Prague uh, School of Theater, so they they study mainly like uh, set design and costume design here, and it's called Damu. Uh, amazing school and. I really feel like in my old, old uh, fine arts <laughs> academy because, like, you know, the everything's like a little bit dirty. Like, you can have, you know, the, you, you have the room that is like very like well made. Like, it's it's prepared for for bringing something something in here. It's like you know, drilling the you know holes in the wall, and no one's gonna tell you something. Like, you know, like living like a I don't know, like a dirty floor, and like it's still fine. So. So comparison um, to to this like a new buildings and school that are like very neat. <laughs> and what is it you're doing in Prague? Um, in Prague Quadrennale, which is the festival that is happening once a four years, uh, and it's all about like uh, scenic design, like all about, all about set design, costume design, the performance design. So it's 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 a theatrical, but like not from the drama perspective of rather yeah. from from the perspective of like um yeah the design so it's very like inspiring if you are there and like if you're making installations and sculptures and i feel like it's not exactly like on my way but i feel like it's feeding me yeah. a lot with yeah with, with some content and and if, if you're gonna work in a in another studio for a little while being in prague isn't a bad thing at all is it of course <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like yeah, very good six days of, of like creative, creative place. And, and as I just mentioned, you arrived on the day that West Ham were playing their football final. Yeah, although, yeah. although you wasn't really that aware. I wasn't. I wasn't. I just. <laughs> I, I was just like on the plane with a group of like young guys that looked like somehow associated under some kind of like a tribal, you know, <laughs> <laughs> signatures. Um, yeah, and I then realized that, like, someone told me, like, oh, yeah, there was, like, some football fans in here. So I, yeah, I realized <laughs> something is happening. There's another question that I ask each guest, and that is, if there was you and five other artists, past and present, what would your ideal group show be? 
Five. <laughs> <laughs> you expect a lot from me. Like, yeah, so I would definitely say that uh, Magdalena Abakanovic, who's okay. a Polish sculptor, and that recently had a show in Tate, like a big, big, big exhibition, was, was someone like who really influenced me in a way, but like I didn't, sometimes I'm, I keep forgetting about this influence and then I, you know, I, I bump again on, on her works and like a piece of writing or something, something that she made. And then I realized how, you know, how influenced, influenced I am all the time. So it's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's like 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 the Tate show, for example. I was walking around and reading and looking at these things, and felt like, oh my god, I you know, <laughs> it's still in my it's it's something that like I I I include in my work as well. So that was that was like one of these good things. But also, like I I can say that like I already like last year I already took part in the exhibition in Venice where both. Margarita Abakanovic works were, and they were like my little work as well. So oh, wow. I can say like, mm, the little dream came true. Nice. Yeah, so, so that was a very good thing. And maybe, I don't know, the other artists I can think of, uh, but I, can, I can't really imagine this kind of show, but like, let's say the Cristo, uh, nice. who is my giant inspiration but i don't know how how would i squeeze <laughs> <laughs> because yeah it's rather like a one-man show and yeah about it but he he he's his work i also like you know a massive inspiration if you think about like using a space and interacting with the space and, yeah. and i remember the the, the the moment when i first time so a photograph of one of his works and i just completely you know i was speechless i was like oh my god what's this yeah. <laughs> i love it it was this barrels of oil placed in in the very like a narrow alley so i imagined like oh my god. i kind of like realized like oh my god you can make works like that yeah. like yeah. you know this culture can be can be somewhere can be placed somewhere like can can you know like surprise people like on the street and 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 be very powerful and at the same time uh, have like some yeah some 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 uh, some deeper sense not being just decorative but yeah so so I remember like I saw it like on the first year of my sculpture studies in Warsaw and yeah that was that was a game changer. <laughs> so, so yeah. Well, it's good when you come across an artwork that gives you a realization that your field is much bigger than you actually thought it was. Yeah, yeah. And I remember this moment from, from my education that because I somehow, you know, started studying sculpture and I wasn't much prepared prepared for how it looks in Warsaw because it was like very conservative, like rather like a, you know, uh, life scale model of like a human being, like, you know, like made in clay. Yeah. And I remember like when I had the, the spatial design workshops, the tutorial shown us the, the examples of like how you can play around the space in architecture, let's say. And it was again, like one of these things where where you realize, oh my God, it can it can be like that. It can work like that. It doesn't have to be a statue placed somewhere in the middle on, you know, on a, yeah, on, on, on something that like, I don't know, like detach the audience from, from, from it. So, uh, so yeah, so I avoid cleans uh, since then. And yeah, and this is, this is, this is something that, that really opened me up for, on, on this like path of like making bigger things. So. I was speaking to an artist a little while ago. He wanted to create a large artwork and he was concerned that he may not have the money to look after the work going forward at once it had been showed and didn't know where to store it. And when he asked someone for advice, they said, just make it and then worry about all of that after. Otherwise, you're sort of giving yourself a ceiling that you can't go beyond. Yeah, yeah, this is this is yeah, this is this is one of these like logistical problems we all have, but somehow it always works works out. But like, yeah, it's 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 a nasty nasty part of 
like making things uh, in a large scale because like there, there's like a lot of logistics there's the transport there's like all the materials that you have to buy you have to calculate them in cubic meters <laughs> yeah. know, like, and then you realize oh you know that, that that amount of liquid for example doesn't really do anything <laughs> because you have to multiply it like by thousand <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, and, and all all the things are really you know really challenging. But at the same time, if you like problem solving, that's perfect because you have a lot of problems <laughs> on your way, like before, after, during the you know the process. It's, yeah, it's endless. So, well, speaking of future projects, at the moment, as you, as we just mentioned, you're in Prague for a few days. And then you're back in London next week and you are part of the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week. Tell us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Okay, so uh, the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week uh, will be happening (laughs) across the borough. And we consider like a few locations for for, 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 for my installation. And we ended up in the Cromwell Place. Uh, nice. in the court- courtyard so uh, the work I will be installing there will be the art installation that I've made before for the Kew Gardens in Wakehurst which is made of willow it's kind of like a woven uh, of willow and it's it was addressing uh, the my- mycorrhizal fungi that create the connections underground where so I was like very much interested in in the part of the garden of the botanical garden that we don't see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because like we're walking around uh, we see the beautiful trees, we see we see the flowers, we, we see we see the, the environment, but like underground there's like a lot happening. There's and another another universe under there. Exactly. And like I think like it's it's wild. <laughs> we don't really know what's happening there because like uh yeah the scientists are like like trying to find out and like there are more and more in, like absolutely interesting discoveries on this field uh, so i try to connect some 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 pieces of, of of the gardens of the sites with the installation that was presenting yeah there was like based on the the mycorrhizal fungi and the structures that that they make yeah and and this installation would be like now the piece of this installation actually because <laughs> it was like much much bigger uh but it, it will be presented in 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 the courtyard yeah i hope we work well in the city environment because i feel like the same thing's happening in the city but we just you know we we may be less aware even of them but like i think there might be a lot of life. <laughs> Where did you show it before? I showed it in um, Wakehurst. It's uh, West Sussex the Botanical Garden of Kew. Uh, very beautiful place. So if you're ever around, it's, it's, it's there more to see. I like the idea of the same artwork going to different environments because it has a different energy and sometimes even a completely different language. You know, if it's in a a massive space, a small space, an inside space, a rooftop space, you know, it, it, it has a different language wherever it's placed. Yeah, and I feel like it's also like a big challenge because when you when you don't think about the space in this case, like in any case, like you can fail a lot because the scale can change everything. Like if you just place the same work you know, in two other places, that it can it can work completely differently, and it, in one place it can overwhelm the environment. In the other place, it, it can completely disappear, or yeah. you know, it can just not work well. So, so I think like one of these challenges <laughs> that that you have, and like that I, I I love in this kind of like work and and in designing these kind of installations that 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 you have to consider. A lot of elements to, to see if it will work or not because I, I just try to, to to be very respectful to the space that I that I get to do something and I always feel that maybe you know some some things won't work in some certain environment and and you just have to hold it. <laughs> well, Cromwell Place feels like a very old and ancient building anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's. Um, I think it's like it's listed building. It also like you know brings another like 
you know, challenges with installation, with rigging, with, you know, uh, for example, like we, like a few weeks ago, we had a chat with, with the technical team and we asked them about like rigging points. And I had something in mind, like, oh yeah, there's like something, we can hang it here, we can hang it there. Like there's a, there's a chimney, maybe we can like, you know, wrap something around the chimney and, and, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be something. And like the, the answer was like, uh, well, you know, the chimney can, you know, actually, you know, fall if you hang something on it. So, you know, it's very old buildings. So something like you don't know, but like you learn. With of practice. course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, if you're just used to working in a an, an arts environment where most things are accessible. Um, yeah. That's one of the challenges you have. And that's one of the challenges you've got to get around, which makes it yeah. a more interesting piece for the artist. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, if you like going all the time up the hill, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, go for public arts. <laughs> and how long is it in Cromwell Place for? So the installation will be launched on 22nd of, of June. And uh, it's going to be there for, for two weekends. Uh, also accessible during the weekdays. Yeah. So from 22nd of June to 2nd of July. Okay. Well, I mean, we're speaking now on the 9th, which is a Friday. So so this is out in time. I will try my damnedest to edit this and put it out for Monday. So it's ready for your ready for your launch. That's great. That's great. I'm going to be in the middle of a hell, you know, like on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this was the prime time to talk to you before the stress starts. Yeah, because like, you know, when I... I'm going coming back like on 13th, I think like night. So from 14th is going to be the, you know, the kind of like a madness happening in the studio because I also making, I'm also making another work that I'm sending to, to Poland for, for the, for the other exhibitions. So like at the same time, I'm making, actually I'm preparing two, two things. Like I'm repainting the, the willow pieces and why they, they dry, I go to, you know, to put a plaster on, <laughs> on the other, oh, on the other work. It's, it's happening. A lot, a lot of ha- happening in my studio now. So, yeah, it'll yeah. all come together. you just got to have faith, right? Yeah, it's like, it always ends up well somehow, but like, yeah. it's, it's always like a massive, massive work and like sleepless nights. And, and I'm always like full of appreciation to the artists who launched the project and they, you know, they look great. They they just like relaxed and and <laughs> I I'm always like dirty, exhausted, <laughs> barely standing on my feet with like, you know, like the, some pains on my nails all the time. And <laughs> I barely, you know, can 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 think like someone is asking me a question, for example. And like I the only thing I would like to be just like to be in my bed and just like <laughs> I know that feeling. Just for one last time, if you just tell us the title of the work, where people can find it and when. So the title of the work is Hidden Dimension. It's going to be present in Cromwell Place in their courtyard. And it will be on site from 22nd of June to 2nd of July. And finally, if anyone wants to see your work who can't get to the show... Where might they find it, be it website or social media? So my website is just www, my full name and full surname, dot com, which is like, <laughs> I'd rather like Brilliant. suggest to, you know, like to have a look. Copy and paste. Just copy and paste <laughs> instead of like try. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And like my Instagram is also like pretty much the same, but uh, some, some, the bar in, in the middle, but like. <laughs> I know it's, ter- it's it's it doesn't make my life easier, you know, my name and surname if you live, you know, outside of Slavic countries. But of course, yeah. <laughs> but that's what makes it all interesting, right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, do you think so? Because I I think it's like it's just like one of these things that like you you don't either you don't even like even try to memorize the name because you can't even like you know like write it down. I got fifty percent of it okay. Yeah, like, I think, like, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you are, like, in the top. <laughs> right, Mel Gazzard, so thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a great rest of your uh, stay in Prague, and I hope you have a very stressless 
time when you get back in London. Oh, yeah, the high hopes. <laughs> All the best. Yeah. Thank See you. you. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Vestalia Chilton, the director of Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Trail. You've just been listening to one of our featured artists. Make sure to keep these dates for the Art Trail starts on the 15th of June and lasts all summer. And Art Week starts on the 22nd of June and ends on the 2nd of July. All of this information is on our website, kcaw.co.uk. We look forward to welcoming you. If you've got an exhibition or any other creative project within the arts, or even just want to promote your own artwork, you could do that in podcast form similar to the one you've just listened to. They start at a convenient price point that is comfortable for any artist working on a budget. This podcast itself is created by working artists and we know how important that is. So to find out more information, you can email us on ministryofartsorg at gmail.com or on Instagram at ministryofartsorg. Ta-da!